Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I was watching some YouTube films recently and the latest thing is not to say, welcome, hello, how are you? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You have to say, yo, what's up guys? What's up? Uh, what's up? A bird, a plane, some clouds? What on earth does what's up mean when you're greeting somebody? Hi, what's up? I don't know what's up, so I'm going to continue saying very Englishly, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Let's get on with it. I've been sent these things. Friend sent me some second-hand ones. He said, I don't use those, Graham. Maybe you can find a use for them. Maybe you could catch a chub on a pen. Now, we used pen rods before. Hugely successful little fun things they are. The enjoyment factor is quite immense. So, he sent me a couple here. This is just a standard pen rod comes out like this, extends out. I do like the pretty blue and I do like the fact that it's got the original pen cap on it there. So I'm going to try this one and they're saying go and try and catch a chub. Now for those of you who don't know the chub is a river species in the UK and they live near snags. I suppose they're a bit like largemouth bass when you think about it. They live in a sort of snaggy type area so when you hit them it's a sort of hit and hold a lot of the time. Is a pen rod going to be up for hit and hold? Okay, fine, let's put that one there, but I've got a bigger one, a slightly bigger one. And the problem with some of the pen rods is they don't collapse. So he's extended this one, because I can see that he's got one joint that won't fully go down. That's a little bit longer, this one. In fact, it's a good deal longer. That's almost one third of a fishing rod. It is about 10 inches longer. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not quite sure about this wobbly butt bit here, is I'm gonna put, Fresh water reel on, I've got here, let's get the glasses on. Because Chub, my other reels have got, you know, 10 pound line on some of the ones they came with. So the this one is like four pound line on, it's more of sort of match fishing refined type reel. Oh dear, problem number one. Turn that round, maybe I've got this on the wrong way, I don't know. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the reel I wanted to use, this one, the reel feet, I'll just show you so you know. The gap of the real feet is actually longer than the pen rod so small. If I undo any further, the nut comes off the end. The locking cap to hold the reel comes off the end and I can't get enough space on there. So, problems number one, would it fit the other rods? And the answer to that is patently obvious, no. Ah, that's blown plan one out. So I'm gonna have to use my smaller pen reels which I'm hoping to put this one down, will fit one of these rods, let's get it. Now the problem here is, these are dinky little reels that come with other pen rods, but they're standard. This one's got to fit on there, surely. I'll tell you what guys, it's going to be a, a close run thing. Yeah, that one's going to go on. Okay, so I could potentially be back in Action. Look, they're only for fun. They're fun rods. That's all they are. I think anybody would profess to say they're 100% pure, straight-on, hardcore fishing rod. It's a bit of fun. My problem being with chub, they're finicky, and where I'm going, it's just hammered beyond belief. Most of the fishing in England is. And they're not having this £10 line. So, I've, I've obviously got a big gap there. I'm only going to be fishing a small stream. Let's put that down there. I think I've got to top this off with some £4 line. And fingers crossed I can get like 30, 40 yards on there, which is more than enough because I'm not going to be casting 30, 40 yards. So let's just top that off with some fine line. I might do the same, put the other small reel on that rod as well, do exactly the same, and maybe try rig one up with a ledger and one up with a float. The float I don't hold out much hope for. I don't think I'll be able to cast it. But that's why I need this thinner line because the thick line through these tiny little rod rings here is not going to be good for casting. I've got to get really, really close to these fish in this stream. They'll be spooky. So I think I've got to go to four pound line minimum. And fingers crossed, I can get some on here.
Now you can actually undo the drag at the front, get some lube or something like a silicon. They tell me silicon is good because a lot of these reels, look, they're so cheap. Let's face it, guys, they are sort of plastic. But if you put some lube on there, some silicon or anything like I'm stolen some of Mike's bicycle lube there. Um, it just makes that drag slip a little bit smoother. And bear in mind, I'm on a slightly lighter line now. So you won't give me like 10 pound line. It can be a sticky, jerky drag, but I want to make as smooth a drag as I can. So there you can see, I'm only on four pound line. I don't want to be too tight. Otherwise, you know, the shock of a fish might actually bust me off. For float, I'm using double rubbers, top and bottom. Yes, that's what I said. I'm on double rubbers. Been a wet day. Anyway, you can see this little ring at the bottom to put your line through the bottom end of the float. I could thread it through there, but I'm actually using here a second piece of valve rubber to pinch the float because I don't want it to move when I do strike. Not that I'm going to be able to strike too hard. I've also used a float that's a little bit larger than I would want normally because to allow for it to uh, to cast. Going to have a shorter rod, difficult casting. The hooks are quite large. Going to tie them on. I think yeah, maybe something like a size 8, 10 or 4 would be about good if you're using bread, which is what I intend using, trying to catch something halfway decent. Um, I then put BB shot on. I think this one takes about 6 BB, so it's a heavy float, but it allows me to adjust the line, hopefully, because I haven't got the length of the rod. Now for the link ledger. I just use a link like this of doubled line, just a piece of real line, it's going to make my small link ledger. I then thread another piece of main line through, tie a hook on, dead simple, blood loop, tie a hook on, snip off the tag end, and I can use this for ledgering. And obviously you would think the ledger can slide down, so I put a shot there, what? Pinch a shot on, again, the trusty old BB shot. I pinch it on, so the main SSG, look, it comes down on a link, bumps up against it, but it can still slide up and down, and the fish won't feel the resistance. Okay, I'm all rigged up. Got a nice big hook there, straight through, no links, just a straight real line of four pounds. A swan shot, single SSG, stopped by a BB. That's a running ledger, standoff link ledger. Old school. And I'm gonna try this one, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to fish it properly. It's a float, but I've got a bigger float. It's a six BB. Stick float there, balsa body stick float, BB shots down to a nice chunky hook. So, two chances, one and none really. I've no idea what I'm going to catch on the float or the ledger. Let's get down that river, see if we can't find a spot where at least I can get in the water with them. Well, I saw a disaster, guys. It's absolutely drizzling. The wind has come, which they said would come tomorrow, and the weather fronts come through quickly. The drizzle goes over my glasses on the camera lens there. Plus, I can't see through the water, so it's not looking good for penrod fishing. The other thing is, to mash my bread up, I need a small bucket. I've left the bucket in the car. I've also put two pounds in the car park charge machine, and a man tapped me on the shoulder and said, did you see that it says it's free on Sundays? I said, I do now. It's nothing like supporting your local council by giving them two pounds for absolutely nothing. So it's turning into a really good day. One decent fish could turn it around. So what I'm gonna do is mash up my bread in here, down the side. If I can't get a good angle on these rods are so short, I brought some waders in my knapsack just in case I have to get to a really out of the way place. I'm hoping A, the waders don't leak and B, I can get in the water to somewhere that no other anglers have fished. Anyway, there you can see my first point of call is just here. There's what we call a crease, a little bit of a slowing up there, across the back, uh, another swim further down, but I'm just gonna try in here. I've got bread, let's get some in the water.
Oh god, it's nothing on that run through there. I think we're gonna have to move downstream a bit. You can hear the traffic roaring. Oh, there's a ring falling off, that's good. That's why he gave me the rod, I see. And it's bent. Let's get the hook in there. Let's just move on downstream. Well guys, I've moved down. The wife owned me, so I've had to listen to the wife for 10 minutes. And that's given me time to, uh, well obviously I was listening to the wife, and watching the swim while I was listening to the wife. And I've seen a chub move in there, but he's, I can't tell you how close he is. I fear if I cast, I might spook him, but I've got no choice, I've got to give it a go. If the float spooks him, we're going to try and free line a, a piece of bread flake past him. I can see him there, and I've thrown bread in. I can't quite see whether they're taken or not, but we give it a shot. Right, I'm just a little concerned that floats a bit heavy for him. I know where I've lost him now, but I've got seconds to get that float just right, which is right past that piece of brush there. If it goes down any time now, it could be a chub. Missed him. I've got to let it go through because if I wind in too quick, it's going to spook the chub. He's probably spooked by me on the wise phone call anyway. Let's try again. I just have a feeling that oh, I can't do that nut up on this thing. I just have a feeling that the float might be a bit too big, but we're going to do about six trots down and see if we can make that chub come out. I've no idea whether it's going to hit it or not. But it's sinking, sinking, sinking. Well, that's a good run through. That was a good run through, guys, that one. That didn't disturb anybody. I barely moved that float. Barely moved it. I'll let it go down. Just in case there's one laying down the back. The problem being with these little pen rods is, look how far I've got to lean out. I get near the rushes, and I'm going to jerk it up. So I do not want to get snagged up with four pound line in the rushes. And the sky is looking ominous. Cars are just churning along the, the roadway. That's not a bad old car, it's just there. Fish on. Fish on, guys. What the hell is this? Oh, come on, Mr. Penrod. Come on, Mr. Penrod. Oh, man, it's a big day. That is a big ass day. Here he comes. Oh, 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 they want to break. That is a monster day. Look at the size of that. Boys, that is a dace on a pen rod. My first dace, I believe, on a pen rod. Pen rod challenge, partially, partially complete. Now, what if the dace are taking that piece of the bread? Maybe there's an outside chance that the old chub are going to take one as well. Let's try again. The initial dip of the float could, in fact, have been. Could have been a chub. I'll be real careful because I'm trying to guide the float and strike at the same time. Right in that zone there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, at least I'm blanked. Even when you're fishing messing around like this, it's just nice not to blank. And striking is going to be my problem as well. I wonder if I should link ledger a piece of bread there and just wait for him. It's a job to know what to do, to be honest, because that. Catching that dace has obviously put him on red alert. See, those shot are too close to the float. It's so shallow. I'll tell you what, I can't so okay this rod. That's with that lighter line. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. He's gone right through a nice depth. I can't really go any more deeper. If I snag the bottom, I might not be able to pull out the uh, pen rod if I do get snagged up. 
I might have to move downstream. It's annoying because I actually did, did see the chub there. Wow, is that windy. I'm going to try the link litter, guys. That wind is howling. It's vicious. Chances are fading rapidly. That rains. It's not going really to look good. OK, hook out. Man, this rod's tiny. The other one feels like a, a full-on match rod compared to, uh, with this little chappy. That's what I don't want to get snagged up. Same situation. Piece of bread on the hook. Bigger piece of bread this time. Let's have a go. We used to do this quite a lot, rolling a piece of ledger in round. That's not good. I don't really... I'm going to have to touch ledger this. Let's see if he comes. I can actually see the bread out there, just under the surface. Oh, this wind is, oh, there goes the hat. The wind is a shock, which means there's a rain squall coming. Brilliant, I love it. Can't get that chub to take, guys. I've got one more swim. The weather's just unbelievably disgusting, but there is a swim down there. Oh, fish just rose. That's a piece of crust he's taken, I think. If I can creep just down the margins here, go in around this left-hand side and get up there, there might be a chance. I've no idea whether the sound's working on this mic at all. Testing, testing, one, two, three, and all that. No, I think I'm going to... I'm going to leave my knapsack right in front of me here. Just so that there's any arm movement when I throw this bread in, they might not see it. Assuming, of course, that there's something at home. Who knows? The bread is going in. Big time. You might be able to get something to come out. There's some snags over there too. Right, I'm going to go and try the float again. I just feel that's going to give me the best shot getting a fish. I can't believe I didn't bring a bucket for the uh, to mix up that ground bait. Who knows what will happen? I'll give it a shot. That float is definitely a bit on the lumpy side for this swim at this close range too. It's a strange smell around here. I don't know whether I'm actually kneeling in some dog excrement. Oh, there's a treat going up my shoe. A little worm. I should run, little worm. That's it, run and hide. OK, out we go. No, too close. Ridiculously too close, Graham. What a stupid child you are. Now I've got to let it go all the way through so I don't spook the chub if they're at home. I'm not sure that wasn't a bite, actually. I'm going to move these shot up. I'm just not happy with them. I could go to a lighter float, but I've just got that feeling. Oh, please give me a break. One fish is all we take on the pen rod, just one fish as a success. You know, I don't want to squeeze that bread too hard. Holy cow, the wind is howling, don't even cast ground. And that, over there is a big trailing piece of weed, I fear the worst, it's right where the chub will be. Right where it will be. Oh, not a bad cast, not a bad cast, come on, come on, off, off, off chance. Got a bit of a chance there, bit of a chance. Oh, I lost a fish. Chihuahua, that could spook the chub though. What the hell was that? There we go again. That was a good cast too. Next one's gonna go up the tree. No, what a crappy cast. What? Oh no, oh God, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on a fish. I'm on a fish, guys, I'm on. He's on, look at, oh, look at this rod. Look at this pen rod. It's definitely a chub, it's definitely a chub, I can see, oh, oh, Jesus. 
oh man, I've got to watch this drag. I've got to watch this drag and the head cam and the fact, oh, he's in the bushes. Now we're in deep doo-doo. Oh, it's a big chub. Big, big chub. Big chub, guys. Big chub. He's trying to get in the weeds. I'm trying to pull the weeds back. I cannot get any further out. Get him, but oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Please don't break. Please don't break. Can I spook him out? Nearly, nearly. Oh, come on. I just want to... Sh <gasps> yes, get in there, you beauty. Yes. Holy cow. That fish has got to be... Whew, mama, three pounds. Let's take, check him out. <gasps> nearly trod on that one. What a beaut. Oh, man, alive. Look at that chub. On a pen rod. Hook fell out. That was lucky. Do you know, I think the fact is... You can't pull the hook in too hard because you can't really strike, can you? Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Check that fish out, ladies. What a beauty. Shows you the pen rod works. I figure today might be a tough one. It is, but come up with a nice fish. I'm going to put him in downstream. I don't want to spook any others. Should there be any others there, keep down low. Keep low. He had a nice hole over the back there. So I could probably put him in here. Probably fall in here. There he goes. Gone. Beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. Result. Well, people, I was really pleased to get that big chub right at the last minute. A bit of a tough challenge, but the pen rod came in good at the end. Get yourself. A fistful of pen rods. They're not expensive. I think Mike says they're just over £10, £12, something like that. Give it a go, a bit of fun. You can always change the line on them and obviously go a bit heavier if you want, like I did. Strip the line off, put some light line on there. Great bit of sport, great bit of fun. That's all they are. We're not saying they're totally serious, but look, come on. It's teeny, it's tiny, it's just a laugh. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on both channels, TA Outdoors, which is going boop, boop, on numbers, huge numbers. Anyway, we'll see you next time. And don't forget, if you want to support us, the latest and greatest. I've even got a hoodie this time. Yeah. Man, I feel so cool. It's unbelievable. An old age pensioner in a hoodie. You don't see many of them, do you? We'll see you next time. And who knows, I might even be catching something larger on a pen rod. See you next time.